Hey there, fans of Murder and Mayhem. Welcome back to Frybox64 Productions. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Frybox64, and today we're doing just a fun little spontaneous spur of the moment video for you guys today. I actually am off today. Uh, I don't have to work on federal holidays, so it being Memorial Day and me not being in the office today, I figured I would just go ahead and throw together a fun little video for you guys. So one of my bucket list wishes is to play as every combination of D&D, race, and class. Um, that you could possibly have, and that includes monster races as well. So not just the playable races, uh, like elves, dwarves, humans, and whatnot, but like Aarakocra, um, um, Bullywugs, um, Scarecrow, literally any kind of monster you could come up with, uh, any kind of race or monster you come up with, I want to play as that and the different classes. So to kind of help me along with this, um, I wanted to kind of start a fun little D&D challenge. I'm calling it the Randomized Character Build Challenge, where basically you roll randomly for the race and the class and the background and everything about the character. So not just like randomly throwing their stats together, but just randomly choosing everything about the character themselves. So. Without further ado, I'm going to show you the results of my character building. Off camera, I went and I grabbed my dice and I combined all of the different personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws, um, all the different spells and everything and just rolled randomly for every choice. Uh, every like choose skill, choose spell, choose everything. I rolled randomly for that. And <laughs> this is the interesting character that we got. So let's take a look at the stat sheet then. Okay, so this is my uh, final character sheet for uh, my guy here. We'll focus on each little section as we go here. Uh, my character's name is Philippe Scout. I got the first name of a uh, French human male and the last name of a Warforge, so that's what we're going with. He is a Furbolg sorcerer. <laughs> His background is an urchin, which kind of helps considering I didn't know how exactly to get him to the point where uh, he was outside of his clan and adventuring without him having done something horribly evil. Um, he is neutral good, and his, uh, we'll get to his sorceress uh, origins here in a second there. Uh, but his stats are as follows. 15 on strength, 15 dexterity, 15 constitution, 17 intelligence, 14 wisdom, and the stat that is most important for a sorcerer. Drum roll please, 12. <laughs> yes, we have a whopping 12 for his charisma. Uh, <laughs> how I did that was I rolled the stats and then I rolled randomly to see which stat uh, value would go into which stat, starting with the highest and going on down. So Charisma was the last one to get filled, so it got the lowest amount. <laughs> so then we are moving on kind of on down the line here uh, for proficiencies in skills. Um, we started out with randomly rolling religion and persuasion as his proficient skills, but thanks to having the urchin background, as we were talking about earlier, he also has proficiency in sleight of hand and stealth, and that comes in handy quite a bit later. Um, so then, uh, we, moving on down to racial traits, we have speak with, or speak Speech of beast, it's supposed to be speech of beast and leaf, I wrote it down wrong, but basically he can talk to birds and, and animals and things, and they kind of understand what he's talking about, but he can't understand them. Uh, hidden step, where you become invisible, basically, for a round. Uh, and then powerful build, which allows him to carry uh, up, to, which allows him to carry things as if he were a, of a large build instead of the medium build that he is. And kind of going back to the furbolg bit here, furbolgs are actually half giant, uh, half. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're half giant, half ogre, or whatnot. But I know that they are fey creatures that are the same size as like goliaths and stuff like that. But they are like their own little fey creature. They guard the forest, and they don't really have like naming conventions or anything like that. So, um, so yeah. So that's kind of what he got for his racial traits there. And then city secrets is the additional uh, little fun feature that he gets along with his urchin background there. And then for proficiencies and things, um, he is not proficient in armor 
or uh, any like conventional weapon like type like that. So I just kind of wrote down here, he's proficient in daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and like crossbows. Languages, we couldn't really choose any extra languages with his background, so he just knows common, elvish, and giant. And then with his urchin background, normally he wouldn't be proficient in tools because sorcerers, uh, but he is proficient in thieves, tools, and a disguise kit. Moving right along, uh, we then got to roll randomly for spells. Uh, cantrips, as you can see, chill touch, mending, mage hand, and acid splash. An, inter an interesting combination. As soon as I rolled the chill touch, I thought, oh boy, we are off to a great start with this guy. And then for spells, uh, he can start out with two. Uh, the two that I rolled were Feather Fall and Color Spray. And then along with his sorcerer, uh, his sorceress uh, origins, which we'll get to that in a second, uh, he has Alarm and Protection from Evil and Good. And then his Furbolg abil uh, racial ability allows him to cast Detect Magic and Disguise Self. And Wisdom is his stat of choice for that specific casting thing. Then moving right along, he has 8 hit points uh, due to his constitution mod. Uh, is at a 30 speed. And I crossed out initiative and I put his age in there. I rolled randomly for his age. Uh, he is 21, which um, according to the book, Furbolgs reach maturity at the age of 30. So he is this lanky little teenager running around thinking that he's an adventurer. <laughs> um, now to the fun part. Uh, this, is, this guy is a sorcerer. I rolled randomly for what his sorceress origins would be. At level one you get a sorceress origin where you get is kind of the source of your power there. He got Clockwork Soul, which is from, I want to say Unearthed Arcana or one of the other, no, 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 Glacius Cauldron? I don't know, not Glacius Cauldron. Uh, somebody's Cauldron. One of the new books. <laughs> one of the new, newer books that came after the Fairy Handbook. But basically, um, it, it, basically his powers come from the uh, world of like Mechanus. Mechanus. And order and all that fun stuff. Which is kind of at odds with him and his character. And I'll get to that in a second. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah. So his perk that he gets from being a Clockwork Soul uh, fellow is restore balance, which prevents a target, uh, I believe up to 60 feet away from him, from using advantage or disadvantage on a d20 skill check. Uh, he can use that twice, once for each proficiency point, and then he has to complete a rest in order to get that back. All right, so that's kind of the statty part of him here. And then on the back, um, just wanted to highlight, his, I wrote, I didn't really have like a spot, I know you're all probably wondering why I wrote his cantrips and his spells over here under additional combat features. Um, I don't have a spell page for him, I just have this, so we're going with this, we're working with it the best we can. Um, and then over here I have his equipment. Uh, yeah, you're probably wondering why he has a light hammer. So I rolled to see if he got the crossbow bolt and the 20 bolts, or the crossbow and 20 bolts, or a simple weapon. We got simple weapon, and I landed on a light hammer on the weapons list. So, uh, he has a lovely light hammer that is mostly for show and not much for, uh, for utility there. Uh, he also has a component pouch, explorer's pack, two daggers, and then the urchin equipment, which includes, like, the pet mouse, the city map, a token from his parents. And I didn't feel like going into a whole lot of detail there. We'll figure that out later. And then I have just some miscellaneous info for him. Uh, I, I usually try to get a little bit of flavor text just to kind of flesh out a character uh, to kind of give uh, more of an idea of what their personality is going to be like. Uh, so for sexuality, I rolled... Uh, I had about ten different forms of sexuality I could roll, and I landed on a one. So he is either celibate or too naive to recognize that people are being flirty or have a romantic interest in him. We will see how I wind up playing him. I think I'm going to play him as naive, but we will see how this works. And then for religion, uh, I rolled that he was part of a cult. And for the uh, goddess that he was, or the deity that he was a cult dedicated to, uh, was a primal nature goddess. Which is really at odds with his clockwork soul archetype here. So, uh, so we will get more into the story and his backstory and how all of this connects together. But first, let's take you to Hero Forge, where I can show you exactly what this Furbolg fellow looks like. Let's go.
Dun 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 dun! And here is our Furbolg boy, Philippe Scout. <laughs> So I started out with the, uh, in, in Hero Forge, it's called Forest Guard, so I started out with that body. And as we went along, we got an elegant head for him, eliminating the brutish features of the, uh, giant face that we had. Um, the body, we kind of kept that kind of chunky midsection feel with him. Um, we also wound up adding, as you can tell, some extra stuff. The horns on top of his head? Those aren't part of his helmet. Those are part of his actual head, technically. Uh, <laughs> then, if you turn around here and look over here, we have a uh, broad dragon tail. Which, again, rolled randomly to see if we added a tail or not, we have a tail. And then if you look over here, we have forearm fins. Yes, those are manacles as well. Uh, and then there's his light hammer on his back. We rolled uh, randomly for items that he, he gear that he had on him, and I got uh, I got a hammer and uh, a two-handed sword. And since he doesn't actually own a two-handed sword, I went with both of his daggers. Uh, and then if we can just turn him back around again. So for the outfit, we have uh, the shoulder pauldrons don't come with that jacket and uh, shirt, but. Um, I think it kind of gives him more of a piratey look. Uh, we've got cargo pants, we've got the studded boots, uh, and you might notice on his base we have vines coming out of the base and a wooden spoon behind him. Do not ask me where the spoon came from, it just decided it wanted to be a part of this. And then as far as like the coloration went, I had the most fun coloring him. Uh, we went with just a general theme for the uh, clothing, the uh, I think Crescent Lord is what we went with, uh, kind of darks and things. I got lucky and rolled gray for the skin, which is actually close to what a furball like looks like. But when I originally had rolled like the theme for the body, uh, it came out human, uh, which is why we have a red-headed, green-eyed, kind of Irish-looking coloration there. But um, <laughs> we fixed it up a little bit. Uh, and then for his face, originally he was supposed to have kind of a cocky look, um, but uh, then we played around with the sliders a bit, and now he just looks so scared and confused and like doesn't understand what is going on, but he's gonna charge into battle anyway. So very much does not look like a sorcerer, but I promise you that this is, this is Philippe Scout, our Furbolg sorcerer guy. I like him very much, I am very proud of him, and you all should be too. So this is our fine fellow, Philippe Scout, and he's, he's a very lovely, wondrous looking fellow indeed, but um, I bet you're all wondering, how did this glorious fellow come to be in this specific universe? He couldn't have just popped into existence, because the, even though the dice gods are powerful, they're not, they're not that powerful. Well, <laughs> fear not, for I shall tell you the story of Philippe Scout's origin. So, randomly rolling on the life story here. Um, Philippe knows who his parents are, but he barely remembers them as they were taken from him at an early age. Uh, his mother disappeared to fates unknown, never to be seen again, not confirmed whether she had lived or died. His father died of sickness shortly after his birth. He was born at home in his little foresty clan area, I am assuming. We did not decide where his homeland was, but I'm assuming it's in a forest somewhere. The youngest of six children, Philippe has five older siblings. No, I did not roll for who they are. We will figure that out as we go along. They are not pertinent to this part of the story since they are nowhere in his life right now. Uh, for a few years, he was raised by the clan that he was born into kind of passed along from one home to the other. No, we had Philippe this week, you get Philippe the next week. No, I had Philippe last weekend, you take him this next weekend. Although nobody actually called him Philippe because, well, that wasn't his name yet because furbogs don't actually give names to their people. They just say, hey you, over here. And everybody just knows who, exactly who they're talking to. After he had been raised for a little while there, um, he decided that being the youngest out of six and shuffled around from one house to another just didn't 
really sit very well with him. He did feel that he belonged. So in the middle of the night, he snuck away to uh, work his background decision for why he became an urchin into this. Uh, he left home and found a place in a thieves' den, which was a comfortable small house in a city somewhere. Yes, he moved to a small city, and the thieves' guild were like, "Oh wow, you're a growing kid. Uh, you could." You could really earn some coin for us, so they accepted him into the little home that they lived in, and where he actually did well as a thief and and was quite comfortable for a while. Uh, despite the fact that uh, he his family was not an active part of his life, he had several friends among the thieves and had an overall happy childhood with them. And then, then one day when he was one day when he was a teenager. He's met a beautiful elf woman who won his heart and then broke it. And so from that day forward, he swore that he would earn enough money to woo her and win back her heart because apparently she laughed at him for being a poor little sod. So from so at that point, he spent time working with the Thieves Guild, working harder than ever, earning extra coin. And then he spent time working for a local magician or, or wizard or, or magic caster. I haven't figured out who yet. But he spent some time working another job and just working, 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 putting his skills to use. And, and finally, after he'd saved up enough money, he went to find his beloved, only to find out that she had died under mysterious circumstances. Turned out that a, a much more powerful, noble person had arranged for her death. And oh, oh, Philippe did not take that well. He swore revenge against this person, and that became his one of his many life goals, to take revenge on this person and avenge his poor fallen love. <laughs> and he has never been in love ever since then. As he was growing up, he also realized that even though he tried his very hardest to cast nature magic and, and even became part of a cult that, that worshipped a primal nature god, hoping that maybe that would help him tap into his nature magic better, every nature spell he cast just seemed to not work right. Nothing that he did really seemed to work. And then he realized that the majority of his, his spell castings had to do with, with order, and, and he would hear strange ticking at night. And one day someone pointed to him and said, Look! Your eyes! I can see clocks in them! Which is actually what I rolled for his manifestation of his abilities. He, uh, the hands of a clock spin in your eyes. So, um, yeah, whenever he, he casts magic, apparently clocks appear in his eyes. That's interesting. Uh, so, so yeah, so that is, that is why Philippe is, is currently going around. Uh, Philippe, like said, is not his real name. It's not his given name. But, um, after joining up with the thieves, they were like, you need a name. And he's like, what should I be? And they're like, you can pick whatever name you want. He goes, I don't do names. You don't understand me. And so they're like, fine, we call you Philippe. Because they thought that was the, the most annoying name ever to give him. And that he would absolutely hate it and choose his own name. But he's like, Meh, that's what you want to call me, that's fine. They're like, ugh, fur box. And then later on, when, when he was out traveling, someone asked him, first and last name, please. And he goes, uh, Philippe. And they're like, your last name? He goes, um, I'm supposed to have a last name? And they're like, yes. And he's like, um, Scout? Is that that's a last name, right? That that's a last name. And the guy just kind of like the travel agent just kind of sits there, looks at him, and he's like, "Fine, Philippe Scout. Here you go. Cause no trouble." <laughs> and that's kind of his origin story. So, uh, so despite the fact that he is an orphan and and. Uh, it was kind of like passed around. He had a good family and everything, but he just didn't feel like he belonged and actually found a really good a really good life with the Thieves Guild. So some other little fun things about him, his personality traits are, and I rolled these from the book, uh, I like to talk at length about my profession. Whether that is jobs that he has done or jobs he is going to do, I have no idea, but he likes to talk about his job and the things that he's done. And I don't pay attention to the risks of a situation. Never tell me the odds. 
I sense we have a button pushing pony in the making here. <laughs> Those of you who know about the Gatherverse and about the original adventures there, you will get the pony reference, but <laughs> secret insider stuff. Uh, his ideal is community, but not in the way you would think. My hierarchy of minions will keep me safe! Yeah, that, that's a beholder. <laughs> that's a beholder ideal, I rolled that. I'm assuming he means his hierarchy of mice. And then for Bond, uh, like we mentioned before, a powerful person killed someone I love, the little elf gal that he fell in love with. Someday soon I will have my revenge. Yes, and that was the little elf gal that he fell in love with, so. Uh, that is the one time that he has been in love, and then beyond that, like, he is just... If he is on the falling in love side, it's fine, but if anybody else is approaching him, he is just, like, oblivious to what other people are doing to him. And then his flaw, which is probably the most generic thing I could have rolled, once I start drinking, it's hard for me to stop. And being part giant, um, I guess, it, I feel like this guy could put away quite a bit before he wound up getting trashed. So anyway, so that is uh, Philippe Scout, our Furbolg sorcerer orphan. So, um, well, so what we're, so I'm, I'm very happy with this fellow. I, I, he is growing on me more and more. The more that I look at his picture and the more that I look at his backstory, I, I, I like this guy more and more. So, uh, hopefully sometime soon, uh, I'm going to see if I can use this guy in a session and see if I can survive a session with this totally broken character. So, I mean, well, he's not totally broken, but he, I mean, he can stand on the sidelines and cheer while everybody else in the party helps. So. Uh, so yeah, so if you want to do this challenge as well, all you need are a computer and or every possible D&D source book that you have available to you, um, your dice, and maybe a calculator to help you add up stat points, but, uh, and then just go ahead and start rolling. See what kind of crazy characters you can come up with. Put down, put, put down in the comment section below. Tell me what you come up with. Share that around with your friends. I want to see this challenge go viral. So uh, thank you all for watching. Like I said, share this around. I want to see this go viral. If you liked what you saw, feel free to hit like and subscribe. Again, this was just a fun little thing that I wanted to do today, and I, I really do enjoy that, and I'm really looking forward to using my little Philippe later on in a campaign. And hopefully next time we will see you for more murder, mayhem, and maiming. Bye, everybody! <laughs>